All right, I'd like to conclude this module with a discussion of the topic that I've listed here on the board behind me. Are we, quote unquote, the prisoners of our socialization? All right, we're going to discuss both sides of this. Um, clearly, we've made the case that socialization is a very, very, very important uh, procedure that we all must go through, uh, that we presumably, uh, especially for the who are watching this course right now have gone through um, and continue to go through. So we talk about this idea that were we not properly socialized, we might not be in the positions we're in today. For example, were we abandoned in the woods and never uh, uh, presented with any type of social environment or were we locked into an attic and never given the opportunity for appropriate socialization? Would we be the people we are today? Uh, I think we can clearly in those uh, examples say no, we would not be. Um, when we look at the agents of socialization, we look at family and neighborhoods and peers and schools and religion, did all those things have uh, very strong impacts on the selves that we are today? Clearly the answer is yes. I can look back at my own life and point out um, the very important um, social forces that guided me to being the person I am today. Um, so, it seems to a large degree, and one argument uh, in, toward this is, yes, we are very much the prisoners of our socialization. Uh, without a social environment, we wouldn't be the people we are, and were our social environments to be drastically changed, kind of think back again, alternate universe type of things like, you know, uh, explanations like that if you enjoy sci-fi uh, or fiction, uh, the idea of, you know, if things had been different, would we be different people today? And I think most of us would agree, probably yes, uh, that um, it certainly seems like socialization is the driving force into creating who we are. Okay? Then we can look at the flip side of that argument. Okay? And uh, the argument could be made, are we prisoners of our socialization? In other words, uh, are we bound to be the people that we are based on those agents that acted upon us? or are we, quote unquote, doomed to a specific type of uh, uh, realization of our own selves based on our socialization. And the argument I give a lot of times in this, uh, to, to that side of the argument, the opposite side, is uh, assume perhaps, and I'll you know, just kind of give you a, a, a for instance, that you were male or female uh, brought up in a you know, poor environment, uh, what we would consider to be a less or, or a poverty stricken environment uh, in which there was a lot of crime, uh, drug and alcohol abuse, perhaps there was a strong instances of abuse even within your own family. Uh, and we, you know, we consider, we would probably consider to be a uh, disadvantaged or uh, abusive lifestyle growing up. And as a result of the poor environment you lived in, uh, you also probably didn't attend very good uh, elementary or high schools and are subject to a lot of influence by peers, uh, which we also consider to be very kind of antisocial or negative. Um, and those were the major agents of socialization on your life, teaching you a very specific set of behaviors and values. Um, and then on your 18th birthday, uh, you walk into a liquor store or a convenience store with a gun and rob it. Right? and then get caught and spend some time in jail, but then obviously the next place you're going to appear is in a courtroom before a judge, and let's say you have a, a whether it's a public defender or a defense attorney or you're acting as your own defense, uh, probably the argument you're going to make is, Your Honor, I was subject to very poor socialization, even if you don't know those terms, but any good lawyer, especially one that studies sociology, will know that term, right? Uh, my client is, you know, uh, the product of his or her environment. Uh, Your Honor, brought up in a, in a you know, poor neighborhood, uh, with bad schools and an abusive family situation, and uh, negative influence by peers. So, uh, and then of course the judge would bang his gavel and say, you're absolutely right, uh, set this person free, they are not responsible for their behavior. Of course not. That would never happen. Uh, we are still held to a standard of behavior 
that in a lot of sense expects us to, in a lot of cases, rise above our socialization. And that argument that we often say that runs counter to this idea of prisoners of socialization is the concept of free will or the ability to make decisions on our own. So we have this dichotomy, we have this argument for both sides. Yes, socialization is incredibly important and socialization has a huge impact on the people that we are. Uh, our development of self, as we've seen, to a large degree is a product of our social environment. Uh, however, when we incorporate this idea of free will, we also acknowledge that to a certain degree, we are active participants into our social construction of self. We are expected to a large degree to acknowledge, yes, that there are impacts on us, but that we can make decisions about how much impact those social forces have on our construction of self. Uh, another way of putting that is, yes, our experiences impact us, but we have the decision to decide whether or not we're going to be bound by those impacts. And again, once I can give you an example on each side of the, of the uh, theoretical coin here. So we'll start with the poor, disadvantaged uh, person who is brought up in a largely negative uh, or poor socialization. Uh, are there people raised in those environments who go on to become very positive and successful people? Of course there are. Uh, so, you know, can a child from uh, the, the, uh, the projects of the inner city become a doctor or a lawyer or a, a respected uh, business person? Of course they can be because they have the ability and most of those individuals who kind of live those, those uh, examples or are examples of that uh, situation will usually tell you and if you, you know, study people's self-report, I made a decision not to let my social environment impact me, maybe not in those words, but have to paraphrase. Likewise, just because a person is born and given every advantage, does that necessarily guarantee that that person is going to grow up to be uh, successful? Not necessarily. That a person who is quote unquote born with a silver spoon in his or her mouth could make uh, very poor decisions throughout life and end up uh, in poverty or in jail uh, based on the actions and decisions of their own making. So. Again, this debate, you'll hear both sides of this debate and, and, and many of you will uh, you know, come up on various uh, uh, sides of this debate and certainly in the uh, discussion uh, that is, I'm asking you to participate in uh, for this module, I'll ask you to um, talk about your opinion about this debate. Um, please just recognize that there are two sides to it and both sides of them can be very effectively argued. All right, this concludes Module 3, and um, I'll see you next week.